Hey everybody, it's a Ginger Optimist, and today my friend Alex and I are going to show you the difference between cold process soap and hot process soap. Let's do it. The first thing we're gonna do is gear up for safety, right Alex? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna get on our goggles, put on our gloves, Alex has already mixed her lye with her liquid, so I'm gonna do mine now. Always add lye to the liquid, never the other way around. So we're gonna begin by pouring that in. I'm gonna back up because I do not wanna breathe this in. So we've actually mixed our distilled water, half distilled water with half apple cider vinegar. And we will leave the recipe down below under show more. So if you want to try making this soap, you're most welcome to. And I'm going to be making the hot process soap. And Alex, what are you doing? I'm going to be making the cold process soap. All right, so let's get busy making our soap. Okay, so I'm going to put my Crisco in. And that's already measured out. Again, I'll tell you the measurements will be down below under show more. My organic coconut oil my lard, and olive oil. We're gonna let these begin to melt inside the crock pot, and Alex is going to begin to take care of her oils now. I've asked Alex to share with us the difference between the cold process soap and the hot process soap. Yeah, so cold process soap um, is going to be, I'm going to be mixing the oils with the lye solution at a relatively low temperature. So not applying any excess heat anywhere from like room temperature to 120, 130 degrees Fahrenheit typically. Um, and then pretty much once I mix it and bring it to trace, I'm going to be putting it into the molds and leaving it to set. For the hot process soap, the Ginger Optimist is going to be putting her soap um, in the crock pot She'll bring it to trace, but then she's gonna leave it to cook. So because it's cooking, it's gonna react a lot faster and she's gonna have to leave her soap in the mold a lot less um, time, for a lot less time. And she's going to have to wait a lot less time after unmolding before it's ready to use. So the curing process and the hot process soap is really short. The cold process soap takes four to six weeks. Yes. But either way, it's great soap and it's well worth it. Okay, so mix yours up. Okay. I'm just gonna add all of my oils. So this is my lard. My Crisco. My coconut oil. And my olive oil. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and melt this in the microwave. I'm gonna melt it in 30 second bursts so that I can make sure that I'm very precise because I don't want to heat the oil too much. So I've melted my oil in the microwave and it's completely melted. I've stirred it just a little bit just to make sure everything is evenly combined. And I'm just going ahead and taking the temperature of my oil really quickly just because I want my oil and my lye solution to be pretty close in temperature when I mix them about 15 to 20 degrees maximum difference. So this is about 122 right now, and the lye solution is about 112. So we're within a good range to mix the two together. I'm gonna get ready to combine my lye with my oils. I'm just going ahead and burping my stick blender so I don't put any extra air bubbles in there. Just giving it a tap. Okay, and then I'm going to pour my lye down the shaft of my stick blender to avoid any extra air bubbles. Slowly. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and stick blend the, these together until I reach a light trace. between pulsing the stick blender and actually just stirring using the stick blender. 
to make sure that everything is evenly combined. So right now I'm adding the colorant to our soap. We are using cobalt blue oxide pigment and I have one teaspoon of pigment with one tablespoon of olive oil and I've blended them together. I'm only gonna add half for now and see how I like the color before I add the rest. I'm using one ounce of Juicy Pear Fragrance Oil from Lone Star Candle Supply. And I am combining that with one ounce of Granny Smith Fragrance Oil, also from Lone Star Candle Supply. And I'm gonna go ahead and blend together. I've blended in my fragrance and I have blended in my color and at this point it's pretty much ready to go into the molds and I'm just using silicone molds for this today. The square ones I sprinkled a little bit of lavender on the bottom but these ones have such wonderful details I'm just gonna leave them plain. We now have the cold process soap setting up in their molds. Molds. <laughs> in their molds. And so they're just, they've got to sit for 24 hours. Then we take them out of the mold and then they need to cure for six weeks. So it's so easy. But the beauty of the hot process soap, it takes a lot longer in preparing it the day you make it. But actually, I could use my soap tomorrow if I wanted to. I prefer to allow it to cure for you know a week or two because the longer it cures, the harder it becomes and it's gonna last longer. But you know, you could use it tomorrow if you needed to. So now I'm going to add the lye mixture to my oils. my sodium lactate in my lye water so we're just going to go ahead and pour it in. Sodium lactate is the sodium salt of lactic acid and it's actually going to help your soap harden a little bit faster. Um, it also it acts as a mild preservative. So now we are going to blend away. It's going to take eight to ten minutes for my, my hot process soap to come to trace. I turn it off every little bit so that I don't burn the motor up in my stick blender. It has now come to trace. You can see because it's drawing lines across. So I'm going to put a lid on the crock pot and turn it on low. I'll go ahead and do that. And it's going to cook for about 45 to 55 minutes. And then we will come back and add the lavender and our color. The soap has been cooking for 45 to 50 minutes, so we're going to test the pH balance of it. And so, Alex, if you would do that for me. Okay, Okay. so I'm gonna take a little bit of distilled water in a small container. It has to be distilled water because tap water will throw off your taps. And I'm just taking a little bit of the soap and I'm gonna make a paste with the water. Do it up nice and 
It doesn't have to be completely dissolved, but I want it to be mostly dissolved so I get an accurate reading. Okay, so now that my soap is mostly dissolved in the distilled water, I'm going to take a pH strip and dip it in this soap. And we're just gonna give it a second to make sure that the color is true. And we're the only reason why we're not wearing gloves is because we have already tested this soap. If you're not sure whether or not the soap is safe, you should be wearing gloves at this point. Looks like it's an, is it an eight? It might be a nine. Actually, now it's even lighter. I think it's an eight. Yeah, it's an eight. So basically, we're comparing the color of the pH strip to the color indicators on the test booklet to make sure that, um, and whichever color most closely matches the strip indicates the pH. Your soap is gonna start out very high on the pH scale, probably around a 14, which is extremely basic or alkaline, and it's gonna get closer and closer to seven, which is neutral, as the soap cooks. If your soap is higher than 10, 10 to 14, you should not be touching it with your bare hands. Anything lower than 10 towards the seven range is safe to use and you, you can use your soap like normal. So now we're gonna add colorant. Excuse me. We're using that cobalt blue. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting ready to add the fragrance. I'm gonna add one ounce of lavender oil, essential oil. Ah, that smells so oh my good. Gosh, so good. <laughs> Okay, so now I've already got lavender, little pieces of lavender down inside my soap container. So we're just gonna begin to dip it out. I'll spread it out in just a minute. Yeah, you'll notice the soap is a lot thicker than the one that I poured a little earlier. We pretty much have to scoop it into the molds rather than pour it. So we're gonna come back later after we've got all the molds filled and we're gonna let them sit and then we'll take them out and show you the difference between the two soaps. So these are our soaps in the mold. Mine is the hot process and I don't know if you can see, it's got kind of a roughness on the backside where Alex's is the cold process and it's very nice and smooth. Uh, both soaps are amazing. And the difference between mine and hers is I could actually start using my soap tomorrow where Alex's is gonna have to sit in the actual um, mold for 24 to 48 hours and then it's gonna have to cure for four to six weeks. So mine, I like to let it cure for a couple of weeks but it doesn't have to. So it just depends on what you know your needs are and what you want. Thank you so much for watching The Ginger Optimist. If you enjoyed this video, hope you'll give us a thumbs up. And if you're not following me already, I sure hope you will. If you wanna know every time a new video comes out, hit the bell. See you on the next video, my friend. God bless, bye. bye.